Hello there, this is Lauren from Bold Notion Quilting and I want to show you guys how to do the optional star or sun pattern in the sky for our little bunny quilt for our quilt along that we are doing. Um, if you'd like to follow along, I'll show you how to mark it out. So you're going to need a diamond shape of some kind. I happen to have nesting rulers. You can Google these, find them on Amazon. Um, they are an eighth of an inch thick and they are made only for marking, not for actual quilting of your quilt top. You'll want water or um, air soluble pen and a straight ruler of some kind for when you actually start quilting. And then also, I have an acrylic table here, um, if you can see it pretty well, on my machine. So when you're using rulers, I know when I first started using rulers, this sounds totally silly, but Someone told me I should use rulers, but they never told me how to use rulers. So I was trying to use a ruler just on this little, you know, part of my machine here. Um, and I didn't have any stability. I'm like, ah, oh, rulers are awful. I'm never going to use these things. But they actually sell custom made um, acrylic tables, just like they make for your domestic home sewing machines. They make them for your uh, long arms as well. So, um, and if you've got a mid arm or a drop in table, you're fine. So that actually gives you like 10 inches worth of stability when you're using your ruler. So I have that on my machine ready to go. Okay, and I'm just checking. Sometimes your little clamps will get in the way of the acrylic table because it sits out so far. So I'm just gonna take that one off. So now to mark your diamond, I wanna make sure we can get as much of this in the camera as possible. What I did first was I took my diamond. If you don't have nesting rulers, any one of your, um, maybe you have some rotary cutter rulers, some diamonds of those, use one of those. Um, it'll all work about the same. So what you wanna do is get that diamond in place. So first thing I did was I made a diamond X. So I put my diamond on there um, and I marked it all the way around, right? And that's why you've got this hexagon in the middle because I've marked that diamond all the way around. And then I made an X with it. And what I did was I lined up this point with my main point of my diamond. Okay, so that's even. And then my bottom one's even. And once I got those even, I traced around it. And that's what gave me this hexagon in the middle from the sides of my diamond that I was drawing. And then I went ahead and just put some additional points on the edge. So then I put my diamond in the middle of the X that I made, okay? So these two don't exist yet, and we're making these two on the side. And all that I did was I lined up my, um, my sides of my diamond with the bottom part of my hexagon that I created. So it fits in there perfectly, and I just marked each side. And then I did the same thing when I turned it uh, vertically as opposed to horizontally. So next what you want to do is get your thread ready. now. If you're not comfortable with rulers, you don't want to see anything extra crazy on your quilt top, you do not need to use the yellow thread. That initially wasn't um, part of the quilt along, but the more I went about it, the more I felt as though I wanted some crazy yellow sun in there. So what we're going to do is start quilting it. And I actually like the design with the hexagon in the middle. I don't think that was in my original design, but I'm going to go with it. So I'm going to show you how to work your way around now that it's marked. And if, oh, what I was saying was if you don't, um, if you don't feel super comfortable, then just use a blue, the blue thread so that it'll kind of match a little bit better and you won't see it protruding from the top. So I'm just going to tack off my threads anywhere I feel like. And I am going to use yellow, so hopefully you can see this pretty well. I actually shut off some of my lights. Um, so that you could see this better. So this is just kind of a general rule of thumb for quilting with rulers. First things first, if you have your acrylic table, you've got your straight ruler. Your straight ruler is made for um, quilting. So it has to be a quarter of an inch thick if you're using a long arm. Some domestic machines can use the eighth of an inch thick, um, some cannot. And when you're quilting, no portion, if I push down on this as hard as I possibly can, which I won't when I'm quilting, my hopping foot does not go over the top of it. If I tilted it down, my hopping foot still can't go over the top of it. Um, just to kind of account for anything crazy that could happen. Um, so you want to lower that hopping foot. I lower mine right here with this bolt 
just to make sure that it can't hop over your ruler. This will ensure that you don't hurt your machine and that you don't hurt yourself when needles break and fly everywhere. Um, and you know, it'll just make sure that everything's kosher so you don't do anything harmful for your machine. So you've got your table, your ruler, you've adjusted your hopping foot to be as low as possible and you've got the right size ruler and everything is generally marked. Once I make this, if you feel like you could have used more markings or if you think you need more markings, make all the markings that you need, okay? Because some people would have wanted to do lines from one point to the next. So I've started with my, um, tacking down my threads and I've started at a point of the diamond. And in my brain I'm doing this for a reason, but I haven't actually quilted around this yet, so I'm not quite sure what that is. So your, uh, your ruler, is going to be a quarter of an inch away from the lines that you've marked because your needle is a quarter of an inch away from your hopping foot from the outer edge of it and you're just going to quilt your first line get to your top point and stop okay now that i've already started stitching i'm going to cut off these threads that i tacked and i'm going it's really hard to see with my camera i'm going to um follow this all the way around so i'm going to Stitch my first diamond. Okay. Making sure that it's a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch to my tip. Do you notice you can hear me click my machine off and on? Better safe than sorry. and then we're gonna be right back to where we started. Okay, now I have two options. I can go around um, and do the inner points or I can finish stitching the outside and I think I'm gonna stitch my skeleton first. So I'm gonna stitch the outside. My camera really gets in the way of ruler work. It's like you have to see in a completely different area to stitch your ruler work. Now I'm doing that diamond. I'm just gonna use that, oh, I'm gonna hit stop. I'm gonna use that hexagon to follow around to make for easy traveling. Cause we're doing just like we drew it out. We did our first X and now we're doing our second X. Sorry if this is so slow going, my camera really is in the way. And I just don't want to mess it up. Okay. So that got us our first X. And now that our skeleton is ready, we're gonna travel around and do the inner part of our arrows like I showed in the design. So this dot is where I'm gonna stitch two that's directly in the middle and it's like an inch away, I think, from each point. So when I'm angling my ruler, I'm just going to tell it, it's probably easier for me to point with my scissors, to be a quarter of an inch away from this dot here. So when I stitch, my needle theoretically should end up in that dot. This is where I was saying, if you need to make additional lines, do that um, so that you can stitch right on those lines if need be. And then I'm gonna end up here, okay? So I need to have my ruler about a quarter of an inch away from here so that when I stitch, theoretically, my needle is gonna end up right in that little cross right there. And then stop, okay? So I've done my first point. Now I'm gonna do my second point. I like to do as much as possible without having to backtrack. So. Sometimes you can't avoid it. The backtracking I don't mind as much as the actual um, cutting off the threads and, tack and tacking them on and off. And then we're 
we're at our last one. If you notice, my ruler moved a little bit out as I was going because as I was approaching um, that space, my ruler was not going to hit right in the middle, so I had to adjust. And now I'm just going to follow this line back, my outer line of my skeleton. And I'm going to do my horizontal diamonds that I mapped out earlier. And we're going to do the whole thing at once. So if you're going to have any additional fillers in here, it's important to do those as you're doing this part. And then I'm going to continue to follow my skeleton around. If I'm um, accumulating a lot of thread, I'm okay with that because I want to see the yellow of my sun, so it's no big deal. Smartest to just follow this oh, as opposed to having to change directions. Goodness. All right, so stop at the top quarter of an inch away, stop at the bottom. Once you hit that line, you need to make adjustments to come back to your dot. And again, if you're going to fill these up with anything, now would be the time. I haven't decided yet, I might just go back and fill them in with something, but I don't know yet. I'm getting back to my skeleton. I'm using that to travel around. The middle of my sun when I'm done is gonna be super bright, yellow and thready. I'm totally okay with that. really wanted a yellow sun. <laughs> it felt like it was missing something in this wide open corner and I hate when negative space is underutilized and I didn't want to do you a disservice. It's tough because I don't know how advanced everyone is who's doing this and I would hope that, it's so hard to talk and stitch at the same time, um, I would hope that it can appeal to a broad range of people. So. You already know about the acrylic tables and rulers and all that stuff. That's good. I hope it wasn't too terrible having to listen to me talk all about it again. And if you're good at following lines and you don't need rulers, don't use rulers. We're on our last one. You wouldn't think something this small would take so long to stitch out, but it could be because I'm talking to you the whole time. If you don't quite hit your dot, it's okay. Just try to stay in the center and hit your other markings so that you get your arrows to line up appropriately in the corners. So now I'm just going to follow this previous skeleton one that I made, and I'm going to do the geometric outline, which is kind of why I put the straight lines in here, just to kind of give myself a feeling for what I was going to do. Because this is a hexagon, when you do a geometric li um, line work, I'm going to get my, uh, what's it called, my plexiglass real quick. When you're doing the geometric line work, you go from line to line. So you got to follow the entire hexagon while you're doing it. Um, if you want, you could go from line to line and just create a square in there and cut off all those points and not deal with it. But in the geometric, let's see, 
want you to be able to see it. With the geometric shapes, you go from point to point and line to line. So because we're in this middle point, we're going to follow that about a quarter of an inch here, and then to a quarter of an inch here, 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 to that line. And we're just going to keep following that around until um, they're good to go. But actually, I think I'm going to do this as a square. So let's cut off those hexagon points like I was saying. That's probably why I put those lines there. So we're just going to go from this middle point to this middle point. We're going to create a square within our hexagon. And again, if you were going to fill this in, now would be the time. This looks incredibly intricate, so I hope this isn't um, too much for anyone. When I drew it out, it just felt right. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna be back to where we started. Okay. And then it'll be much easier to follow. So, depending on which direction you're going, I'm gonna go left because I feel comfortable holding with my left. A good, easy way to get um, the quarter of an inch exactly, when you're stitching with a ruler, you know if you keep it a quarter of an inch away from the line you wanna stitch, it's gonna stitch properly for you. So what I'm gonna do is where my needle is, it's gonna be about a quarter of an inch out to accommodate for that hopping foot. And where I want my needle to end, I've just angled my ruler to sit on that line. So it's gonna give me a quarter of an inch out every single time, okay? So I've got it where my needle is, and then my top portion is touching that corner. And then you must touch the line when you finish. Trying to do that with my left hand is no bueno. Touch the line, and you just keep going around till you're done. There you have it, our uh, geometric design in the star. So again, if you wanted to fill any of these in, you certainly could to give it a little bit of dimension and contrast. Thank you for joining me today. Um, this is Lauren with Bold Notion Quilting. I hope you guys are enjoying this quilt along. You can uh, get updates on it on my Facebook page, Bold Notion Quilting, and you can subscribe to this YouTube page um, and get the videos as they fall out. Please feel free to share with anyone uh, and send me photos of what you guys are doing. I love to see um, how everyone's stitching, how you're liking it, if there's things that you think might fit better with the panel. Send them to my Facebook, uh, Bold Notion Quilting page. Happy quilting, everyone, and God bless.